hear it. Thanks everybody for coming and let let's bro let's start talking about gaming. Like gaming and Web three, the impact of GameFi on the crypto industry. That that's kind of where I want to start today. Everybody, we we all love crypto. We all love gaming, but I mean GameFi crypto. How important is GameFi to this entire space that we're in right now? A lot of people are saying that this bull market, this run that we're about to, that, that everybody's hoping for, is really going to be powered by GameFi, AI, a little, little bit of meme coins. Meme coins are everywhere, but I mean, you know, I want to talk to everybody about GameFi today. How, how, how big is the impact of that on this entire space that we're in right here? And, you know, I, I just want to get a few thoughts from everybody. Matthew, uh, you're, you're up. What are your thoughts? I think, yeah, GameFi is really one of the best use cases we have outside of um, outside of DeFi, obviously. And um, it's really it's really so much of um, a change ever since. <clears throat> sorry. Ever since the Axie days where people were like doing the play to earn. We now have so many different models. We now have so many different use cases, so many pro gaming chains. So many games out. GDC was absolutely full of Web3. You couldn't avoid it. You had to go in under a um, multi-chain advert from um, from WeMix, WeMade. You had to walk past the Avalanche thing that said Web3 gaming sucks. You know, we're all over the space. There are the big players coming in. They're poisoning the well sometimes, but there are huge things happening. Sony making patents, Oasis Chain, all of the Eastern companies, mobile games getting in on the act. This is going to be crazy. It's going to be like no other thing. Like we think we're early. We are. There's only like 50 or so verifiably released Web3 games on like Android and iOS out of about 700,000 apps there currently. So yeah, it's going to be fun. I completely agree there. I mean, half the world plays games. The only thing bigger than GameFi would be if, if what? Tick, if, if TikTok drops the token. And who who knows? Like they might be planning it. But I want to hear from Dub. Like Dub, how how big of an impact is GameFi on the entire crypto space? I think it's pretty big, to be honest. Um, Matthew brought up a good point about it being one of the main use cases besides DeFi. But looking from a um, an entry level perspective, I like to think of it. It's a great on onboarding tool. You know, um, it's very accessible. Just the only one that's probably more accessible is meme coins because it, you know, it's pretty easy to understand it's fun but like in terms of games they're also fun and it's people like to play games for free but now they have the chance to get compensated for the time they spend which is just 100 percent better in my perspective and it, it incentivizes people to learn more about crypto right people can tend to care about more about crypto when they have crypto and this is a good way for them to put a little time in get crypto they start caring about it, they start looking at coin market cap a little bit more, and just kind of engrosses them into the space. So I think from a like a adoption standpoint, GameFi is going to be crucial. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I wanna I wanna hear from the man of the hour. Uh, the who the man whose whose name I just butchered not even sixty nine seconds ago. What what are your thoughts on the entire GameFi in crypto? I think definitely the statistics talks for themselves, like uh, Epic Games, who just allowed, not just, but allowed the uh, three games coming to the, their store. Like, they see a boom in, uh, in the listings of that three games. Like, like a, half a year ago, it was just a few games on their platform, right? And now we are just counting like tens, and, and very soon it will be hundreds of games on that three. So that speaks for themselves, I guess. A great, great take. Absolutely. Uh, Nick, Nick Mars, I want to hear from you, and then I've got a few more questions I want to throw around the panel. No, I, I'm going to come at this from a slightly different angle. From a traditional game development background, this is what the gamers have been asking for for ages. 20 years ago, what, did, what was World of Warcraft full of? Like gold farmers. What is gold farming? It is exactly what Modern Web 3 is. It's just switched around. So instead of users trying to fight against developers to mine gold or items and sell them on some half-hacked black market, instead, us as the developers were giving the users the tools to create and run that market themselves. So it's just, it's the natural evolution, in my opinion, what we've been coming to for 20 years now. Oh man, Ab absolutely, Nick. How how do we get the rest of the world to realize that? Tri bonus question. 
I think uh, the the key is is selling the right product to the right people. Gamers don't want to hear about the financial background and NFTs and blockchain. They want to play their games. They are fine paying real money to buy items on stores and stuff like that, like gold farmers. They're fine with that. They just they don't want to hear about it. They don't want to know how the sausage is made. Don't tell them how the sausage is made and then have a separate introduction, a separate application, a separate entry point where you have your crypto degens, your traders and all that that are doing what we also love to do, like the other half of me loves to do. And that's where you have the crypto side. So instead of trying to have one product to suit two totally different markets, have two products with a bridge in between them. And that bridge is blockchain. But the two customers don't need to interact. They don't need to be involved with each other. It's two totally different customer bases. Same way iPhone sells to like old people who want to take pictures of their grandkids and hip youngsters who want to make TikTok videos. But the ads, the apps, the marketing, the connection to those two markets is totally different. There's zero overlap. And we need to do the same. Oh, man, that that is an excellent point and actually leads us into the next question. But before that, how you just explained it, we need a Gen Z way to get that message across to everybody. And the only thing I can think of is we, we need it, we need someone to come up with a TikTok dance for it. So I'm going to I'm going to add that idea to the notion and get back to it later. But next question, next topic, I want to talk to everybody. Something along the lines of what Nick was saying. Like we've got we've got two different worlds almost combined into one. And I've found that gaming developers, if you come over from traditional gaming and want to build in web three, the whole marketing aspect, the whole culture aspect, it is there are some similarities, but it could be completely upside down at times. And you know, I'm curious on how you guys working with these games and have experience in traditional gaming. I mean, how do you adopt to that? How do you pick up the different marketing, the marketing, you know, the, the marketing, and then on top of that, the culture. Like Matthew, I'll, I'm throwing it to you first, Mister Emoji. You know, I like to pick on people. Give us your experience. Well, I can say as someone who's been like nearly 20 years in the industry now, um, it's just incredible like we just we have such an opportunity to get across and how do we get this message across it's by not attacking the wrong targets it's really not about being like oh we're triple a we're all of these kind of awesome things because you know triple a games have been making the same game for 20 years and they've got billion dollar budgets even the biggest companies in crypto like yuga labs struggle with something like other side you want to make an um an mmo good fucking luck after the days of warcraft but if you want to get into this market, you've got to look outside of this Western sort of bubble that we're all in, which is kind of somewhat anti-crypto on the gaming side. And look at where the market is growing the most. Look at the game, the people that adopt and adapt to games. It's mobile gamers. It's Southeast Asia. It's Asia. It's all of the huge, huge demographics that are up and coming with young populations and increasing middle class. And we can just walk right into that as long as we're good games as long as we are simple to understand easy to onboard and we have a really good and smart value proposition these are the people that will carry us forward and then everyone else will come kicking and screaming um to get a piece of that pie oh man excellent excellent take i mean i i know that coming in from traditional gaming into web 3 it's almost like getting thrown in the deep end at times and i want to hear from i want to hear oh man i'm going to butcher your name but you're going to correct me I'm going to call you Zugas. Zugas sounds good. Cool. Just call me Mr. SMB, that's fine. <laughs> oh, all right, I, I missed that. Let, let's throw it over to Dub. Dub, what, what in your experience, like, how, how have you found the transition? Like, Web2 gaming executives coming over, building in Web3, like, do you feel that it's easy for them to adapt, or is there a learning curve to that? <laughs> There's a learning curve, but it's it's not like something you can't overcome, right? It's just basically um, understanding the culture of crypto, right? And I'm pretty I've been in crypto for a while, and I understand it pretty well. It's um when you think of blockchains, their value and network effects, and that's basically communities, right? I mean, I think the main switch is communities, communities understand communities, talk the language of the community that you're making a game for, and each chain kind of has a different community, right? You might have different types of people crafting into different kinds of chains. So to understand that native community that you're building on, um, building for, and making the product for is inherently important. 
but I mean, you can really learn that by just spending time and interacting with the community. So the good thing about Web3 gaming is that your users are right there. They're a telegram message away. Um, so it's really up to you to put the time in, get to know them, learn them, understand what they like and um, what really attracts them towards things. So just put in the time and then you could you could overcome that. Oh, man, absolutely. Excellent take. And we've got Roger. Roger, thanks for joining us again. And I want to ask you one of the earlier questions that I was throwing around to some of these panelists, and that's the impact of GameFi on the crypto industry. Like, how how big of a part of our entire space has GameFi become? Like, is this something that's really going to carry us over to the, you know, through the bull? Is this something that we've all been waiting for? Oh, uh, what's up, man? I see you again, David. Um, I mean, it's it's interesting, right? Gamify has a lot of narratives right now, and I think there's a lot of positives as well. And I think, you know, like I say all the time, we still have long ways to go, right? What will carry us to the bull, and I just think, is community at the end of the day. Um, we have to continue to build through that, and Gamify are adding some elements there that are providing communities. But at the same time, I still think, you know, from a product standpoint, there's a long way to go from a lot of angles, and you know, we'll continue to see people, you know, pushing certain narratives, and some will stick, some won't, unfortunately, but that's kind of part of the game right now, um, but, I mean, yeah, Gamify has been an interesting time and, and place to see, like, what people are trying to push and how that would look like, but I also think at the end of the day, you know, I say this all the time, Gamify, uh, games, you know, whatever the case, we still don't have enough Web3 users, right, and we still need to figure out that that gap between onboarding, you know, the new users to understand and, and go with these concepts that, you know, we're pushing through our ecosystems. Oh, man, another, another great take. Like, every space, you guys are just dropping banger after banger. Like, I got to up my game. But, all right, so, something I, I want to talk about just gaming right now. Like, when it comes to multiplayer games, what are the best ways that we can really use nfts like how how do tokens really fit into these big multiplayer gaming experiences the main thing that i've seen in the past i mean you know there's there's land and there are obviously ways for bigger companies to look and monetize that but i'm curious what you all think about about the whole multiplayer gaming situation world of warcraft um, like we, we can list the ways that they can tokenize different assets in there and I'm, I want to hear, I want to hear from all of you guys. Like I was playing WoW in the beginning, Magic the Gathering almost half of my life. Matthew, when, when it comes to multiplayer games, like what's the best way to use NFTs and tokens and make that fun? So I think like card games are, are an easy, um, and easy, or it's almost cheating putting NFTs as cards. It is almost cheating. It's, it's so horrifically easy. You just make them limited. And you just print them in the same amounts that you would see on uh, Magic, the paper prints, but in NFTs. When you're actually looking at NFTs in a large multiplayer game, you have to be really, really considerate of the game design about this. Are you going to make a sword as an NFT or are you going to keep it off-chain? I'd argue off-chain for that because every player needs one. Every player wants the best one. And then there's infinite if you can craft them. And so the value becomes whatever the person will pay the least. And you end up with people just sitting in a room, minting and creating all of these millions of NFTs that no one's ever going to wear. Um, and as soon as you bring out a new content with a bigger sword, then you just devalued the most expensive sword in the game. And that's shit. So you have to look at it with, from the game design point of view. Which are the things in games that have the biggest longevity? Is it something that gives you um, a new a skin or something like that? I don't think it's that important. I think it's really important that you have something that gives you a benefit in the game. But it's like a percentage or something like that. It's something that you can't get from the fiat economy. It's definitely something that you can't buy. It's something you find. It's something that's limited. It's something that's rare. And it's something that even if you make another invisibility cloak, there's still this one that has its purpose, right? Something like invisibility. Same value to you when you're level one as level 100. You have to think in that terms for NFTs. You can't be designing things that are just going to get usurped by power creep. And I think it's the laziest thing to just tokenize all the items and think you're going to win, especially if you have crafting. That is a, just a bag of trouble, uh, to use a polite word. Oh, man, e excellent take. And before I throw it over to Nick, I mean, I'm going to just give my thoughts on the matter. I, I can just imagine a, a game like World of Warcraft 
and you need to level up your character through a combination of time and skill. Getting something like that to a certain level where other people can't, and then having a way for that to be incorporated into the marketplace, I mean, to me, that's one of the best ways to use this technology. Uh, man of the hour, go ahead. Uh, Do you mind if I quickly answer your previous question as well about the transition from Web 2 to Web 3? Because I had a, an interesting observation on that. When I first came over, it, it was, as everyone said, was weird. And then I realized it's actually what us game developers have kind of been stuck doing all along, where we are in between financiers, publishers, investors, what have you, and a community. And we need to make the investors profit and then give the community fun. Web3, those two people are the same people. Our investors are also our players. So we need to give them profit and fun. It, it's the same conundrum we've always had. It's just now it's one person instead of two different people. And that gives us kind of an advantage because now that one person wants both goals. Whereas before, the investors always want more profit and the gamers always want more fun. And sometimes they're at odds. Now it's just the same person or group. Uh, now to jump into the other question. Sorry for hijacking that. I, I was excited to answer that. It's a fun topic. Um, I think, honestly, what Matthew said nailed it. You have to address uh, the, the constantly evolving economy and the constantly evolving balance of a game. So you need to take into account things that give a unique utility, not so much a flat bonus. Uh, that's kind of the approach that I've always taken. I think that there is a lot of value in the visual customization, though, because there is a market segment who really likes to stand out, be unique, be flashy. And at least in my experience so far, we've seen taking standard utility items that are like uh, uh, core items of the game, like specific vehicles for mining and exploring the surface of Mars, and then making NFT variants of them that have super cool flashy skins and uh, some tweet stats and tweet utility. But it's much more about the uniqueness of it than it is necessarily a small percentage increase in X stat. Oh, ab absolutely. Great take. Uh, something I, I want to let all the listeners know, if you're enjoying this space, and if you're enjoying this space, go ahead and leave a comment in the bottom right. Retweet this space. We're going to be doing a, an AMA section towards the end, the last 15 minutes. We've got about, I want to say, uh, 15 minutes, and then we're going to get right into it with Mars for me here, all about what they're doing, the cool stuff behind that game. Uh, before After that, uh, man, uh, I, I can't even get your name right. You know who I'm talking to? What were you going to say earlier? I want to throw the floor over to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I couldn't agree, agree more with the Matthew though, but uh, just supplementing Matthew's thought and the next as well. Um, yeah, I agree that balancing the crypto economy in the game is a hard thing to do. But at the same time, crypto economy helps since it helps to balance itself. Because when when a token comes into play, whether it's a fungible or non-fungible token, the price of it and the demand and supply of it, like whatever it would be, like in in, in game asset, like is it a skin or invisible cloak, whatever, the price of it like is being set by by the community. So that's a good thing. Like it's not hard to set in stone by developers or or, or by the uh, by the publishers, but like that price is more more or less is floating and being set by the community themselves so that's a good thing i guess oh absolutely great take on that and what another question i've actually been thinking about this quite often i see games doing one or the other when you're playing the game you're either earning tokens or you're getting some sort of you know, loot boxes or NFTs. And, you know, I, I want to know what everybody thinks about that. Like, what do you all think is the best method to really have have for the gamers? Like, is everybody interested in getting tokens? Do we want to have the loot boxes and skins and NFTs earnable in the game because that's what Web2 gamers are used to? I don't know. I mean, that that's why I'm not building games. I'm asking you guys. Uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just picking today. Let's go to Matthew. You threw up the emoji. Thanks for volunteering. What do you think? I'd say all of it. I'd say it gets better when you have all of it. I mean, you want tokens in the game? You better not be giving them out for doing nothing. You better not just be paying people to exist. It's got to be competitive. I mean, 
there's the whole like pay to spawn, there's the whole sort of like any of those kind of competitive games where you actually put stakes into play, that's a good way. Or there's competition, there's leaderboards, there's things like that. If you look at mobile games, the thing that really drives monetization is multiplayer and leaderboards. Like getting up on a leaderboard is going to make a whale sweaty. It's going to make them start spending fiat currency because I believe if you want to give out tokens and you want to give out NFTs and limited loot and all of that shit, you better be taking money somewhere. Ads or fiat for off-chain stuff. We give all our blockchain stuff away for free um, because we take fiat revenue for ads and that's what backs it up. You need to have something stable and you need to just be there and give away as much as you can and let them experience and then let them do with it what they fucking like. Don't make them stake it. Don't make them do confusing shit with it. Just give them the damn thing and let them play. Oh, man, Matthew, you're, you're my kind of guy. As soon as I ask you, you said, I want everything. That, that's, that, that's me. I, I want everything, too. I want to ask Roger, though. Roger, I, I know you work with a lot of esports guys. You're more on the, the professional side of things when it comes to gaming. What are your gamers like? All, all the guys you know, your friends... Do you think they want to come in here, play, get loot boxes and skins and items in the game because that's the that's what everybody's used to in these first-person shooter games? Or is everybody coming over saying they want tokens? No, they don't care. A lot of two gamers don't care about the tokens. They actually don't even care about the loot boxes. They're making money off of them. I think that's like the biggest mis misconception right now is like, you know, we need to figure out how to pay these gamers and reward them. It's actually not the case, right? Web2 gamers don't really care about getting rewarded. They don't really care about making money back from what they spend, what they're used to. They spend money, and and they don't get anything back. <laughs> it's just what it is. Yeah, Counter-Strike has their ecosystem where you have skins, and you could buy that. But, like, you know, if you look at Call of Duty, Fortnite, all these main games, you know, you have people spending, you know, thousands, if not, you know, in the, in the tens of thousands on skins a, a year. Um, with no way of reselling these skins or way of making money back. So, you know, it's not necessarily like, oh, how this game could reward others. It's how you could onboard these users to have that good experience. And then the rewards that come with that be a bonus, right? Because at the end of the day, if you provide a great game that people just love to play and that gets the, 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 the eyeballs of the masses, and I think there's a little bit of luck that plays into this because I think there's a lot of great games but at the same time, what it takes to be successful in a AAA game studio environment is uh, the, amount of, the, the amount of percentages of success stories is very low. So, you know, I think a little bit of luck plays into this. And if you do have that little bit of luck and you get there, you need to really take advantage and, uh, of that moment um, and understand that when you provide that Web3 aspect, it has to be just a bonus, not a part of the game. Because if you have it a part of the game, I feel like you'll lose the audience, at least right now. In the current standing of where Web3 is looked upon and how it's viewed from the masses. And then, you know, with that said, you know, I, I, I say this all the time. Like, if I go spend $500 in a game on skins just because I like the game and I wanted to, and then a week later I see $800 in my account, that's great. That's a, that's a bonus. I want to learn more. And I think that's the way we continue to onboard users. Oh, man. I, excellent take. Uh, there is something that. I want to get to right after that. I want to ask everybody how we are going to get a Fortnite-level game here in Web3. But before that, I want to throw the floor over to Kayla. Thanks for joining us. You've got your hand up. What's on your mind? Hey, everyone. I love this topic, and I worked on uh, Learn to Earn Grants, with which is... Um, in Asian gaming block, the research said the Asian market was human, and that the Western market was most likely learned earn, but they weren't sure yet. I've always been really interesting. Oh man, we caught about half of that. You were rugging a little bit, but. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so, basically, the, the part we I did worked... here, it was good. So, uh, pr appreciate you joining. We'll throw it back to you in a little bit. But I want to get back to what I was talking to Roger about. I mean, Roger, what what needs to happen for us to get a Fortnite-level game in Web3? Is, is that going to be more rare than winning the lotto, or are we on the right path? I mean, look, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of ways to, to talk about, you know, 
what it's going to take, but there's a lot. I mean, like I said, I don't think games are going to have a quality problem, right? I think, yeah, we're very early right now, but I also think there's some great games out there. You know, Mars 4, you know, I've worked with them before. They have a great game. Um, you know, the, the quality's there. Um, but I also think, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to be about a certain strategy specifically. I think it's going to be a, a lot of luck, too. Like, I, I say this, like, 1% of games survive in a AAA game environment. You go to Steam, you go to all these platforms, there's hundreds, there's thousands of games that are just trying to make it right now. And they don't even have Web3 components, right? So, like, this is where the advantage of Web3 has is because you're able to create these ecosystems that I think at some point are going to be normal. Like, you're going to have, you know, the people who are part of the games that are the gamers, the people that are part of the ecosystem, the people that love the stock part of it, where is the tokenomic side, where they like just buying the tokens. Like, all these games at some point are just have an ecosystem of every type of user, right? From the gamer to the, to the investor to the, to the quick flippers. Um, and it's just who's going to be able to survive that and scale it to the masses. So, yeah, like I said, it's just creating that, that environment and just not burning yourself too early. I think my best advice right now is that we're so early, and if you're a game going all in, be careful because all in right now is not going to make it, right? So, yeah, figure it out. Oh, man, great, great take. And 1%, bro, 1%, I kind of like I kind of like those odds. In meme coin math, that is 69%. In, in, re, in real life. So, I mean, hey, like, we, we could do worse. I'm, I'm just saying. But I want to throw it over to Dub. Dub, you've been a little quiet today. What needs to happen for us to get a Fortnite-level game in Web3? I think um, the Fortnite-level game that's going to come, that's going to get adoption that Fortnite has gotten in the previous, is going to be like some kind of cult classic, right? I think like very niche, something that caters to the crypto crypto culture um but obviously has a gameplay there because you can't just sacrifice a gameplay just to satisfy the culture but it's gonna be a blend of the two and whether that's a game that incorporates something very noticeable around crypto whether it be like some kind of meme figure something that's very recognizable right just look at the virality of memes right it was easily spread it gets around the internet because memes spread themselves that they're fun same thing something that kind of capitalizes on that virality that's easily passed on and then when people come in it's attractive and it's fun and they stay so like most importantly it's kind of hard to kind of predict those things so being a game you know you could think of those things and try to like keep crypto culture in mind but just focus on building a game you know build something good they will come and um hopefully you learn your audience like i said before focus on your community so you have a better chance of that happening Oh, man, absolutely love that. Uh, Matthew, I'm, I'm throwing it back over to you. What, what, can't, why doesn't Fortnite just start selling land in Web3? Like, what, what needs to happen for us to get a Fortnite game over here? So what needs to happen is we need to have a game that's not made in the U.S. for a U.S. audience that already fucking hates Ubisoft. Ubisoft poisoned the well. It's like if you give someone a cake with a tiny bit of rat poop on it, they don't want the cake, right? And that's the problem. You're not going to get this from the big boys unless they force it down people's throats. That's what's either going to happen. We're going to get a fantastic game that comes from one of these massive billion dollar studios and everyone loves it. And oh, it's Web3. Or we have to wait for it just to become all pervasive. It's in every mobile game. It's in all of the big games coming out of Asia. People are earning money. People are telling the stories. But to be honest, all you really need is a studio. It's about 20,000 to 200,000 people who really fucking love your game, want to play every day, want to spend a little bit of money on your game, and really, really believe in you as a studio. And that's why they value the token, because they want to buy into your vision, into your journey, and they want to reap the rewards of being in there early. And that's all you really need. That's why Web3 is fantastic. It's like kickstarter on steroids man and i think these ecosystem tokens and all the rest of it they're not meme coins they're like a bet on the future of the studio maybe gary gensler who was actually randomly in my circle the other day is gonna kill us all for this but i do think it's gonna be it's gonna be the same as it's always been a hardcore of people playing your game your niche is gonna be your community as um, as rightly said and i think that's that's how it's gonna progress the fortnights will come only when we have the time to build them. No one's building games for kids anymore. That's why they all play UGC. 
Oh man, another 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 great take, Matthew. You never let us down. Another thing I love about you, but uh, Ubi, Ubisoft, you guys, we don't hate you. I don't hate you. I don't think Mario hates you. If you guys want some spaces spun up, just slide in the DMs and we'll take great care of you. Nick, over to you. Nick, Nick Mars. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. Oh, there we go. I'll get on to what Matthew said. Uh, I think that there's an opportunity um, for having a Web 2 style typical game client that faces specifically in a like, mobile setting where the users who are playing with it are interacting with a soft currency and a hard currency, buying premium items, buying boosters, etc. And then on the back end of that, you have a secondary client, a secondary web client, for example, that is targeted more as a GameFi platform where you have traders and real Web3 gamers interacting with the game economy. And in a, in a sense, it is two groups of players with separate clients not interacting with each other. And neither one really cares what the other one is doing necessarily, but you have that link between them with the hard currency that the players in the game are buying and selling is a crypto token or is on a database and then outputs onto a, uh, onto a token that can be traded or the items that are purchased and sold within the game are NFTs that are crafted via some sort of Web3 crafting game. Because the problem we have right now is that well, the profit margins and the interest that draw Web3 users is not the price and profit margins you can have for a typical gaming product. But if you have a few Web3 gamers that are playing a high-risk, high-reward gambling crafting game where you make a sword that's fucking amazing, you put that on the market, and then you have a fuckload of Web2 gamers auctioning over it. And I think that that's, our, that's the biggest shot at a at a mass adoption game at the moment, if, if we don't reach that kind of market saturation state that Matthew was talking about soon. No, I absolutely love that. And uh, Matt, you, you brought me back to the WoW auction house. I'm, I'm taking trips down memory lane up here. It's been an awesome space. I want to get to these last two hands, and then we're going to dive right into it with Mars for me, doing some very cool things with, with Mars. I mean, guys, if you like X, you like Elon, you, you have to like Mars. I mean, it's just one plus one equals two. But Kayla, what's on your mind? Sorry, guys, I reconnected. Um, so I worked on some research, and basically the Asian market likes pay to win. And then the East or the West market um, likes learn to earn. That was what they decided. Maybe that's the future, and I wanted to get some feedback on that. But just um, to talk about what you're saying, David... Uh, what the future of just mass adoption is. I hope it's machine learning algorithms because like we'll have playable non-player characters. Um, but besides that, I am curious, like, you know, if we can solve this because the markets are so different. Um, well, uh, my, my opinion, I have, I have a brand new format. Everybody likes learn to earn, pay to win, pay to well, whatever it is. Uh, my, my version is be David, be David 10 X to win. Let's let's see how that turns out. Everybody pay an entry fee. If you're David 10x, you win. Matthew, over to you, and then we're gonna jump right into it with March for me. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I agree, I agree as well. I just wanted to to point out to was it Nick who just said that that's kind of our strategy, right? That's that's what we're doing. We're making four mobile games, then we're making this cross-platform MMO, which is totally degenified. You have to like basically you get a free NFT in each one of the games. You have to mint together, burn those accounts, and then that creates your avatar for the Web3 land-based experience with all the exploring and all the trading and all the crafting that comes from all of the other games. Yeah, so uh, just saying, like, that is exactly the same way we're thinking, man. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to connect and uh, see what we can we can do together in terms of collapse and stuff. Hey, I, absolutely, me too. As long as it involves 69 whitelist spots, you will have my attention. But, guys, it is time for the best part of the space, us v. Mars for me. Let's see how this one goes. First off, want to say I love the logo. I mean, the X brand on the space guy, on the, on the spacesuit man. Like, I think you nailed that one. But why don't, why don't we just dive right into it? I mean, Mars for me. T tell us what kind of cool stuff you guys are doing over there. Uh, maybe it will be me for, for, for introduction about uh, for those who don't, uh, are not familiar with the Mars 4. 
So what, how I call it, it's like one of a kind NFT and metaverse project. Uh, we kind of took a Mars sur surface data from Na NASA satellites, recreated the whole 3D planet from their haze data and divided the whole planet into the separate land NFTs. And that's the, uh, that's the, our project. Nonetheless, we have released th three games based on those lands. First one, um, on which Nick is in charge and maybe will be, will be able to elaborate, it's AAA survival player versus, versus environment builder game on Mars, where you just, uh, just crash on the red planet, you need to survive, you need to grow the plant, uh, grow the food, uh, build airtight base and, uh, and just survive. Building, building the structures. Second, ba second game is web-based uh, mining and, and exploring game, which users can access from whichever platform they have, mobile phone, whatever. And the uh, third game is third-person PvP shooter, uh, where just people are shooting at each other and and fighting for for survival in a fast-paced game. So that's the whole Mars ecosystem where the backbone of of the all the games are unique um, piece of land which our um, our community holds so that's in a nutshell oh man that, that sounds awesome first off i'm saying mars for me because Mar mars 4 sounds like it's for me so i mean I, I felt like it made sense but you said that you have the actual map of mars like i'm playing your game and i am on mars yep yeah in fact oh, that oh. was you, you can run around at one to one scale on the actual like actual Mars 4 land uh, recreated with the best data we could find. But that was like nerding out. I don't think we have time for that here, but coming up with how to build the entirety of Mars in high quality 3D graphics and make it playable in a massively multiplayer environment was the most fun technical challenge I've faced in 16 plus years. It, and you should Google it, like look at some gameplay videos, hop on and play it. It's it's pretty cool. Oh, all right, all right. Also, I, I, all I have you, to oh. give that one to you guys. That sounds very. No, that sounds not, only that, not only that, building on uh, what you were saying about the Mars and Elon, we also made a very very cyber truck inspired vehicle, uh, which I believe we're actually auctioning off right now. And driving across the surface of Mars in a cyber truck is it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Wait, but, 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 wait, wait. Did did you buy that NFT first so that you had the IP rights to it? The cyber Sorry? truck. Did did you <laughs> buy that NFT first so that you had the IP rights to it? It is a very cyber truck inspired, but we made many improvements on it to make it better for the Martian uh, environment, such as removing rear view mirrors, because you don't need them on Mars. <laughs> oh, bro, who, who needs mirrors? All, all gas, no brakes. You guys know how it is in crypto. But all right, 100%, man. 100%. That, that's, that sounded very cool. You guys have multiple game types. We're actually on Mars. Game built, Games built for humans and aliens alike. Wow, like I'm I'm impressed. It it sounds like all right, you guys got another shooter in there. With there's shooters all around us here in Web3. What what makes you guys different in that area? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah go on, Nick. Uh so I think what makes us different here is that what we're doing is tying all of our games together. Uh, whereas, so the, the entire idea is that at the end of the day, everything is about profiting off Mars, mining, exploring, colonizing, etc. The shooter builds into that same ecosystem of the resources you mine on Mars, and you can use those to construct bases, uh, which then you use in the shooter, CG each other's bases. Kind of like a sci-fi take, a modernized sci-fi take on Team Fortress 2 a bit. Um, and I think that's the, the unique element is how it ties in all these other elements of the Mars IP that we've developed. 
Whereas most other shooters uh, that we're seeing in Web3 have, although they may have beautiful graphics and stuff like that, they don't tie into such a large ecosystem. So at the end of the day, the Web3 side of the game that people are interested in, because there's plenty of Web2 shooters, is that ecosystem of customers at the end of the day. And, to me, and so our ecosystem stretches across those multiple games, those multiple clients, targeting both Web2 and Web3 users. Exactly, and I could just uh, supplement, Nick, that uh, as I mentioned, the very backbone of the, each of the, our games is, is the, the land which user owns, and the, each land is unique, and, and they are mining and exploring the lands and, and making it uh, the gimmick of gamification fun. So that's, that's what, you, what our users found really interesting, that we are really trying to stick uh, to a scientifically precise and... Uh, um, and as much as it's known about the real Mars, so that's the narrative what we're seeking. And it's, um, to be honest, it really helps for us to develop a game since we're just using the information that is known from uh, from uh, from exploring Mars and just building the game around it. So maybe Nick could elaborate and talk in, in hours about it, but, but it really makes us something unique. Like we are not making the things totally, not not making uh, making up totally new things. We're just like building the game on on what is already known. The first thing, and the second thing that uh, we're really trying to build a game which our community really wants. We, the Nick has super close connection with our community. We we are trying to keep the feedback loop. Um, as fast as possible and just building together with the community. So that's what I'm really proud of. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I, I've got a major question for Nick right now. Nick, over or under 69% that we will find aliens on Mars in this game? Over, because it's 69.69. .69. Bro, yo, you are speaking my language. I'm, I'm, lit, I'm, I'm absolutely sold now. I'm definitely getting in on this one. N F A D Y O R A B C D E F G. You guys recite the alphabet on your own. Being on Mars and playing video games just sounds cool. Uh, I, there, there's no way around it. But there, there's something else. Like I was reading over all of the, all of the information you guys have. There's gonna be different. There, there's land in the game, right? Uh, if I'm correct, you get an NFT. There's land like that. What do, what do we get to do with our land on Mars? So, so it yeah, go on. Uh, sorry. It depends. Uh, you get to do different things with it in all of the games. So in the survival game, you get to land on that land, like crash land on that land, uh, invite your friends to join you, start exploring, mining, building, encounter hostile robots, and engage with other players in PvP and PvE, and build up and manage your land as you see fit. Uh, very much a typical like PAL world style survival game experience, but tied into the Mars ecosystem. So you can, what you are mining and refining and crafting, you can sell to other players and buy from other players, have it drop potted onto your land, etc. Then within the web client, what we call the uh, uh, the Mars Control Center, you are able through very, very simple interface designed for investors who don't want to get too deep into the 3D game experiences. Uh, you're able to assign different NFTs to do jobs, such as exploring your land or mining resources from them or building on them. And also we're launching, I think, tomorrow crafting functionality on the web client. So you can also craft items to sell and trade on the marketplace there. Uh, on the web client, which you can do from your phone, from your computer, from wherever. Um, and then in Mars 4 Shooter, you can also take those same resources that were mined and, uh, and crafted items, weapons, etc., to build your bases and fight with other players in that like high-octane arena combat style environment. Sorry, go for it. Is there uh, anything you wanted to add? Uh, yeah, I think it's worth mentioning that like most of the projects as I have seen in the, in, in the area are just like maybe selling the, the images of the NFTs, maybe they are 2D, maybe they are 3D, but like all of the assets which were um, releasing uh, 
each one of them are handcrafted by Nick's team. Like we are doing everything internally, and we are putting enormous amount of, of work into each NFT, uh, which is not not only like a profile picture or something. Each of our NFT could be used in game, in actual 3D game. You can run with the colonist. You can ride with the uh, with the cyber cyber truck, uh, similar car, and like that. What I think makes uh, our community in in get got interested in our game like that they can really feel the ownership of their assets now they can run on on their own land they can ride their own week vehicle mine their own land so like i found this exciting i don't know hey me, me too guys I'm, I'm already thinking about going to mars with you i can't wait for this kind of stuff something else i want to ask you both i mean this is a, a question that comes up to all the games up here because of how things really happened in the past. And all the players, all of the listeners, I know we're concerned about sustainability. We, we want to make sure that you actually, you actually have a vision for the future. What, what are you doing to make sure that you've got a sustainable or at least balanced in-game economy? Well, regarding... I think the... <laughs> yeah, go on, Nick, sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll let you just take this over most of it, but I just want to say, I think the best evidence of that is that it's been running now for like two years or so, and active user accounts are continually, continually growing, the community is happy with it, like it's, and that's uh, the best comment on it. I'll let you just get into the details. Yeah, we spent hours and hours with Nick, like trying to uh, keep up with the optimal solution to, to make everyone happy regarding the community growth and, and the token token and uh, uh, later on mechanics and it it's a really uh, big challenge to handle to be honest but what approach we have took that we really want to develop a game that is fun and enjoyable to play and if we achieve this then we will uh, reach not only the three investors like which of them big big part is, is for the profits but uh, web two gamers as well and uh, maybe one day we'll be selling like uh, our web two game copies for um for fiat money and then making even more revenue and uh, paying the land owners even bigger distribution so yeah we have took a path to to develop a fun game and to i don't know reach broader audiences at this angle i guess Hey, I absolutely love that. I mean, you, you guys are explaining everything perfectly. I want to let all any of the other speakers know, if you've got questions, anything specific on your mind you want to ask these guys, just go ahead, raise your hand. We'll call on you and get some more Q&A going here. We've got about five minutes left in this space, and, you know, I, I wanted to thank the, the Mars crew. I'm going to call you the Mars crew. Like, I'm, I literally get to go to outer space now. I'm, I'm pretty excited, but... What is your favorite thing about the game, Nick? What what really draws you to this entire experience? Uh, honestly, it may sound kind of simplistic, but I've loved sci-fi games my whole life. Like I, I, I've I got into game development to make sci-fi games, and like the opportunity of working in Web three and having uh, what, what was Matthew's quote? Like it's like Kickstarter on steroids, which is so true. Like I've run Kickstarter campaigns as well for sci-fi games, and it is just Kickstarter on steroids. And that has been just an amazing roller coaster to get to develop the game from the beginning with the community. Like, uh, and that was very unique for me as well. Like the first playable version, I think like six months into development, we already had the entire community in and playing the game. Like it was, it was just single player at that point in time and we got them playing the mechanics from the beginning. And that was like getting to kind of build my sci-fi vision with the entire community along for the ride, giving input, giving feedback on a regular AMAs and stuff. That was, it, it's an awesome experience. Hey, I absolutely love that, and me too. Like, I, I love the whole sci-fi genre. I mean, Terminator, we're, we're, we're already living in an age of Skynet. Like, how can you not like sky, sci-fi? Matthew, what do you want to ask these guys? So, yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, um, when it comes to the token and when it comes to things like that, you do you have a token? Is it out already? What's the ticker? Um, what chain are you on? Um, and then just a little bit more about that, that sort of like the basics of the, of the token really. And, um, yeah, it's utility. Yeah. So we, 
you have the token for sure, we, al we already have a second token for the different game, for the different utility. Our main token is uh, Mars 4, so it, it being used for the all in-game transactions uh, in purchasing the items, resources, skins, uh, filling a fuel, mining and stuff, as well as selling the items for the Mars for dollars. So it's like a backbone of our ecosystem. And uh, worth mentioning that I using a word ecosystem since our all of our games are interconnected. So they're all using the same resources and you can reutilize your your NFT which you're holding as well as the token. And um, we have another token which is named shoot like shooting. Um, it's being used for as well in-game item transactions, selling and, and purchasing items, upgrading your in-game um, characters, um, buying guns and stuff. So it's like it's like the very center of each of our games. So like, yeah. So it it would be much much harder to implement everything without a token for sure. Oh man, absolutely, absolutely. That that sounds awesome. Like I'm excited to give this one a try. Is are all of these games live? Like after this space, can I can I jump right into it and tell my boss I'll call him tomorrow? Exactly. Like all of our games, which I mentioned, is already up and running. Like uh, for the first game, we took uh, maybe six to eight months to release it uh, from the from the start of the project, and second game took us. Uh, maybe another six or seven months and the third game is uh, it was in the development for about 10 months to the first version but we're already developing the first game for i don't know two and a half years so so yeah you can just play it free like you don't need to buy anything uh, to try the game any of our game so yeah feel free to try it out eager to to hear your feedback Oh man, absolutely love that. Like that that's one of the main complaints people have that there's no game, we can't have fun, we can't play together. You guys have multiple games. <laughs> and and on top of that, we're on Mars, like in outer space. Wow. All right, guys. I mean, I, I want to thank everybody for coming out. This was an awesome space. I had a great time with all of you. Nick, uh any last thoughts you guys want to leave us with? Join us on Mars. That's it. Come see it. Come see the red planet, man. I mean, it's, it's something we've all thought about, like being uh, being one of those few people who will be sent to live on Mars. Well, why don't you go do it? Like, see if you would survive. Let's see how long you would survive on the red planet. Oh, uh, bro. Well, me, me personally, I probably wouldn't last very long. I will last much longer staying on Earth and pl and and being on Mars with you guys. Like that. That's what I'm going for. I'll I'll, I'll last way longer staying here and being over there at the same time. Because, you know, like, what three's backwards and everything. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, you can join us. Like, uh, you can find Mars Battle on the Epic Store right now. And then you can find our survival game. We'll be launching on the Epic Store soon, but it's already playable through our own patcher at Mars4.me. Uh, Mars4.me, sorry. Um, and then uh, also the Mars Control Center browser-based client can be found through the Mars4.me website as well. So come join oh, us. Oh man, on there, there you go. Everybody, check out those websites. Make sure you follow all of the speakers up here. Look into what Mars 4 is doing. Mars 4 is for me. Like Mar Mar Mars double for me. But yeah, that, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to personally try it. Make sure everybody follows these speakers. Check out what this awesome game is doing. And in enjoy Web3 and GameFi and gaming, everybody. I mean, this is the time to be alive. We appreciate all of the listeners for coming out. Thanks to all the speakers for coming up. And we cannot wait until the next space. We do these all the time. Plenty of alpha, plenty of education, a little bit of entertainment, some number 69 here and there. But that's just how we do in Web3, guys. Until next time, have a great day.